Good morning, church, and welcome to our Bible class for Sunday morning. Uh, my name is Dan Spate. This is James Colburn. Uh, and if you're just tuning in with us for the first time, you found the Bible class, Sunday morning Bible class for Central Church of Christ in Victoria. And we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're studying the I Am text out of the book of John where Jesus said, I am uh, today. We're going to be doing I Am the Resurrection and the Life in John chapter 11. Uh, we're going to talk about the text some. We're going to we're going to deal with some other issues that it has that I think it has, and and we're going to look at uh, at some things. But uh, you know, I got a I got a question I want to ask James when we get started. But uh, I think we got a couple of announcements. I I know that last week uh, Vic asked for some help for Mary Jane, and I know that he got four or five to to volunteer. I don't know how that how that's going so far. Uh, but uh, that is something we need to pray about. We need to be praying about Mary Jane and Vic. And, uh, and then we're also, this morning, we're having the, uh, uh, the mission, mission report from Freddie, uh, which uh, we're going to have a, an opportunity to give to that next year. We're going to be doing some special contributions or something so, uh, uh, to uh, help fund a, a preacher candidate there. So uh, that's all things that are coming down the pipe. But uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't you pray for us and we'll get started. All right. Father, as we join together and study of your word, we pray for insight, we pray for blessings, we pray for wisdom. And Father, we pray for those who will hear your message, that it will go into their hearts, Father, and change their hearts and draw them closer to you. Father, we're mindful of Mary Jane and Vic. Father, we pray for your healing hand in Mary Jane. We pray that you will work in a powerful way in her life and that you'll be with Vic and you will give him peace and wrap your arms of comfort around him. Thank you once again, Father, for this opportunity to open up your word through as we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you, uh, did you ever have, because we live in a different kind of culture than these guys did, but did you ever have any problem with, uh, with the actual resurrection? Did you ever... When you were younger, or did it, or did you just accept it? Yeah, you know, it was just a fact. Did you ever have a problem with it? I didn't have any problem with it. I, I just more or less accepted it. Did I fully understand it when I was younger? No. Uh, and and what the implications really are for the resurrection? No. I I didn't fully understand it. I I I believed that Jesus had died and he had risen from the dead. Uh, and that he had, in his word, told us that he was coming back and eventually that we would also rise from the dead. But, but to really see the spiritual impact that that should have on our lives, no, I, I didn't fully comprehend that. It, it's, a, it is a, it's a concept that, that a lot of people struggle with because it's not something we've seen before. You know, in their day, they're going to struggle with it as well because they've got two groups of people, one on one side, one on the other. One says there is no resurrection, one says there is. And then they're watching Jesus, and they're seeing Jesus, in a, in a few instances, raise people from the dead. So they have to take into account that this could be a real event. A lot of people in, in our society, I think, have, have a tough time with this. You know, what what does it mean that that it's gonna, there's going to be a resurrection? We know that it means, you know, that Jesus is going to come back and bodily resurrect us. We understand that. Uh, but it's still for for many people, maybe people watching, you know, I don't really I don't really grab a hold of it. I don't I don't grab a hold of that. Right. I think if you've been in church a long time, I think you probably do. But uh, but if you haven't, if you're watching, you haven't been in church a long time, and it's just a new concept. You know, Jesus has promised that He is going to come back and 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 raise our our bodies back to life. And for someone that's out there that's saying, I don't believe your your gospel. I I don't believe this. For them, life is no more than let's enjoy, let's have a good time, and when I die, it's it, it's yeah, over. Yeah. And and what Jesus communicates to his disciples, and and especially in this passage that we'll look at, is the fact that don't you realize there will be a, a true resurrection? Yeah. yeah. Why don't we? I'm gonna I'm gonna read a, a bit of this. We're gonna start in chapter eleven. We're gonna um, we're gonna start in verse one because I think you you know I know that the text where it's at is 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 all the way down to verse twenty five, but there's a couple of things I think we need to look at. All right. Okay. Just just because it says 
Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and his sister Martha. This Mary, was, whose brother Lazarus was now, now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, this was, these, these three people are really good friends, really close friends with Jesus. They, they're, you know, this is, he calls him Lazarus, the one you love. This is the woman who poured perfume. And, and remember John said, you know, man, it's a whole lot of money. And, and, and Jesus, you know, put him back in his place. And this woman pours oil on him, perfume on him and, and, and wipes her, her, his feet with her hair. It's uh, pretty intense. Well, they have a relationship. Well, and remember, this is also the home that Jesus will come back to. And you have the story of Mar Martha and Mary and Martha mm -hmm. saying, yes. you know, she's busy preparing the meal and she's saying, Jesus, you know, you know, make my sister come help me. Yeah. You know, so yeah, Jesus had, and, and if you, a it, close it, relationship, close relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and if yeah. you look at, and after he raises or right before he raises Lazarus from the dead, what is, what does Jesus yeah. do? We have, we have the recording of the shortest, Scripture, yeah, in, yeah, in the Bible, yeah. Uh, when he says in verse four is is really what I wanted to, I wanted to look at just for a second. It says when he heard that Jesus said this sickness will not end in death, no, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now this is not the first time this has happened. In John chapter nine, when the man born blind, God said they want to know who sinned, his mother or father, or he sinned, who sinned that this guy's blind because they believed that he'd been punished. And Jesus says no. He's been, he was born like this so that it might show the glory of God or the glory of his son. And, I, and I've had people in class before said, that doesn't seem fair. That doesn't seem fair that this guy was born blind, you know, just so God could show his glory. Well, I think, I think what we have to understand is, and I don't think we do sometimes, is, is that there is a, uh, there's a lot of things that are really important to us, and they're not really important to God. Yes. You know, whether Lazarus is sick or not is not really a big deal. Jesus knows what he's going to do. Whether that guy is born blind or not, not really a big deal. What the big deal is is that God is glorified and God is elevated and God is, is honored and his son is honored. That's a way more bigger deal. Jesus said in, in, in Luke chapter 12, he says, man, don't worry about what you eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to sleep. Don't worry about that stuff. Those are, that's insignificant. Well, it's not to us. That's not insignificant stuff at all. And, and here he says kind of the same thing. He said, no, nah, he's just sick. I mean, he's just, he's just sleeping. He's going to sleep. We're going to, you know, it's, it's just, he's going to sleep so God's glory can be, can be revealed. Okay. And, and, and the, the powerful thing about it is, is when we look at what we think God's plan should be and what God says, this is my plan, mm -hmm. sometimes they're totally opposite. Yeah. And, yeah. and and they're totally opposite because not because our plan is so bad, but because God's plan is so much better. And and it's better and it's based on principles that we don't understand. Yes. Because we make plans based on on our understanding. Yeah, you know, I make a plan of job, I make a plan to, for vacation, I make plans for whatever, and I make these plans based on well, we're going to go over here, we're going to go do this, we're going to do that. And God's plan is completely different because he's not consumed with all of that. He's consumed with something many times that we can't understand. And so here, and you have to understand the dynamic here too. You know, when I asked you about the resurrection, whether you had a problem with it, uh, because, you know, we really don't have, a, it's not a big deal where we have a real big problem with this. But in that culture, the Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection of the dead. The Pharisees believed there was. There is a political dynamic going on here. There's a political uh, chess match or, or, or butting of heads here. And these people grow up in that. So there is a, a difference of opinion. They have to deal with it when they see Jesus raise the widow's son, when they see Jesus raise, gonna see him raise Lazarus. Now what do they do? What do they do with this? You know, okay, they're going to have to figure out what is it that's going on here and how in the world this happened and what, how do, it's like anything that we go on. Okay. How do I process it? What do I do with it? You know, when you read something like we read this day, okay, now what am I going to do? And sometimes I didn't process it. They just said, we got to get rid of it. Yeah. And that's what their, you know, that's get, what their solution yeah, was. You know, yeah. we, we've got to get rid of this guy because he's stirring up the Roman government and, and, and we're going to lose all our power. And so, so yeah, 
uh, we don't agree with what's going on and we don't understand it. Yeah. So, so let's just get rid of it. And how many times do we do that in our own life? Oh yeah. We don't understand something. So what do we do? We try to get rid of the problem. We try to ignore. Or we it. don't under. Or well, we don't agree with it. Yes. Not maybe we don't understand. We don't agree with it. We don't agree with the, with some guy's philosophy or ideology, and so we just we just dismiss it or we try to eradicate it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we see going on in our culture right now. You know, that kind of stuff going on. But you know, you got to understand, or we have to understand how how there was a there was a a dynamic going on in this culture with with them with the with the these kinds of of religious ideology on one side and on another side and here these these poor folks are caught in the middle and here's Mary and, and Martha and they're caught in a, in a in a culture where when when Lazarus dies and they have no other man in the house they're in tough they're in trouble in that culture in that culture they're in trouble it's not so much in our culture but you understand it in that culture they're in trouble that the the man most of the time was the breadwinner he was the one that made the made the living and and so these two sisters if they have no mother or father, they're in trouble. And I don't know, it doesn't say that, but you, I want the, the audience to understand that, that there, is, there is other things going on here than just Lazarus got sick and died. Mm. There is a, there's a mindset that people are dealing with. You know, okay, well, now he's in the grave, and, you know, Jesus, we called for our friend, and he didn't come. We know you could have healed him. They knew he could heal him. I don't know that they knew yet really what he was fixing to do here. You know, and if, and if you go on down to, uh, uh, you know, in verse eight, they've already that Jesus has already gone back, and and uh, uh, and and here's the disciples are talking to him in verse eight. He says, "But Rabbi, they said a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and you are going back. He's going to go back to Judea, going to go back where they are." And Jesus answered, "Are there not twelve hours in the day, daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world world's light. It is when a person walks at night when they stumble, for they have no light." You know, and and then he said, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, "Our friend Lazarus has falling as, fallen asleep, but I am going. I am going there to wake him up." See, Jesus looked at this; he just went to sleep. They looked at it; he died. He ain't coming back. He's dead. They don't understand this. Martha and Mary do, but he, they don't understand it no. because they haven't been there. They did. Okay, no. well, he slept. What do you mean he's going to go? They're going to wake him up? So. And, and then it says his disciples replied, Lord, if he asleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So when they told him plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us, if, if he had been there, what would he have done? Healed him. Healed him. He had got him better. But it, Jesus purposely doesn't go there because this is what is supposed to happen. The Father already knows, and Jesus already knows that he's going to die, and I'm going to raise him from the dead. And it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be very dynamic, and it's going to prove to some of them that the that God and the and the Son really are are glorified and they really are special here. So, and I, I think it's interesting when you look at how Thomas says, uh, you know, Thomas was much like Peter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, he, he is. He, he spoke before he really thought, and he said, Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, "Let us also go that we may die with him." Now, is he talking about dying with Lazarus, or is he talking about dying with Jesus? You know, but either way, either way, you know, here's Thomas. Well, let's go. It's, it's, it's easy to talk big. Yeah, it is. When you're standing in the shadows and nobody can see you, it's easy to talk big. You know, when it came right down to it, if he was talking about let's go die with Jesus, okay, what did he do? What did all of them do? They all cut and run. run. They cut and run. When it got really tough and Jesus is getting getting arrested and get taken to trial they're all gone the only one that does not run is john mm-hmm. he's the only one that does not run you know all of them run peter denies him the whole thing but if they're talking about going let's go with lazarus we'll all go to sleep too we'll all die too well this is the same guy that says i don't believe this I don't, I don't believe he resurrected wait a minute here you want to go with him and then in a short while you're going to say well wait a minute i'm not going to believe unless i can put my hands my hands in, in the nail holes i want to i want to see him mm-hmm. Now he's when when Jesus appears to him, he's got, my Lord, my God. He he falls down face first in front of Jesus, but here he's talking about, uh, yeah, well, let's go. You, you, my point is that they don't understand the whole concept of resurrection. I think David did. 
David knew when his son that he had had with Bathsheba was sick and dying, and and it died, and that baby dies. He says, "Well, I can't bring him that baby back to me, but I can go to him." So he knows that that death is not just going to be a stuck in a hole in the ground with dirt in your face and you and you quit breathing. He knows there's going to be something more. Well, and he, he prophesied about Jesus uh, when he said, "You know, that you didn't leave my Lord, you know, to rot and decay, yes. but you brought him back, mm-hmm. you know, to life." Yeah, and and he made that prophecy way back for that that ever occurred yeah the disciples had no concept of what resurrection was all about mm-hmm. uh, they they really didn't understand even until really they started really living this mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. then they finally came to understand oh yeah there is something more mm-hmm. and, and 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 there is a life beyond the kingdom because because even up until the time that that Jesus appeared to them last time, what was their statement? They said, "Oh Lord, will you at this time restore the, the kingdom to Israel?" They were still thinking in terms of a physical kingdom. Mm-hmm. So, in in their mind, resurrection meant meant really nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had seen Jesus raise some people, you know, back to life, and. But they really didn't understand but the, the whole concept but of the one resurrection. Of them, but James, the one of them is the widows. The, I mean, the, the let me think. I didn't. I didn't go look this one up. But it's the the temple guards or or, or his his uh, servants. Somebody his servant or something. I think if I remember right. And and you know, and he and he he heals him from afar. All right? right. But there's another one. The widow's son. Uh, the, the widow's son is raised, or daughter is raised back to life, and and uh, and everybody thinks that that you know they, they don't they can't they don't understand how to make a, make sense of it. They can't make sense of it. It's easier for us, I think, because it's something we've been taught our whole lives, and and we we've, we've accepted it. I think, you know, me as a Christian, someone coming from 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 the world, uh, it was not something I ever really I didn't really care, I didn't really ponder on it. Uh, I've had to I've had to deal with it as time's gone along. I've had to I've had to work it out in my head. Uh, do I really believe this? What does that mean? What is it going to mean to me? Uh, everything that I am and everything that we are here at Central is based on this fact right here. If this doesn't exist, and we'll look, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at something First Corinthians in a little while because what Paul says to the church at Corinth, he said, if this is not real, then then we're a joke. We're a joke. And, and here he said, when verse 17, it says, On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. So he's dead. He's well, been there and, for four days. And the thing you've got to remember is the Jews didn't embalm. No. They, no. they, they, they wrapped, wrapped him up mm-hmm. and put oil in there. But they, they buried them pretty quick after they died. And, and that body wouldn't preserve for a long no. period of time. No, no. And in fact, it says, now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mar- Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. So they had a, they had people around them that just like you would normally see if and when, when somebody dies in your family, you know, people are going to come and they're going to bring food and they're going to, and it's, it's a normal kind of, kind of event that would happen. And it says, uh, uh, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him and Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. You know, she understands the resurrection, even though there is a, there is a, a, a political, I, would, I guess you'd say, debate between two groups of people. Pharisees on one side, Sadducees on another side. One believes it, one doesn't. And you know that debate had spilled over. You know, people had taken sides or some that believed, some that didn't. You know, the Pharisees said they believed, but when Jesus did it and everybody knew he did it, they're going to try to explain it away. Mm-hmm. And they got to get rid of him because they don't understand. Well, because they were thinking in terms of somewhere in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, they had no concept of somebody coming, of God coming to the earth and doing it right now because everyone they had ever seen die up mm-hmm. to the time 
mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, with, with very few exceptions. You had uh, Elijah and Elisha, you know, that had, had done some of this. But up to that point, here is Jesus having done that. And to, to their mind, resurrection meant, oh, after the afterlife. Mm-hmm. And that's all it meant to them. Yeah. Well, well, here he, he when she says in verse 24, more than I know he will rise again in the, res, in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And this is the what we, the one we're going to study tonight, today, this morning is, is I am the resurrection and the life. What do you, what does he mean when he says I am the resurrection? I, I think if you look at the literal translation of that, it says I am resurrection, I am life. Mm-hmm. What Jesus was saying is, you believe in the resurrection? Okay. I am. That's me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm life. I'm the I'm the giver of life, and I'm the restorer of life. It, even though yeah. they talked about it, even though it was a debate, even though they they understood it, it does not happen. That event does not happen if Jesus does not do what he needs to do. If he doesn't go to the tomb and th- on the third day come out of the tomb, then the resurrection does not happen. No. And and he says, I am resurrection because he is going to be the first and he's going to do it himself. And that's a, that's a, you know, for us as Christians, someone who is searching for someone for answers, this is the answer. I am resurrection. I am the, I am the premier event. And, you know, it, it's, it's, I know they don't understand. Many times we don't understand this. Yeah. When I think of resurrection in life, I think he's the restorer mm-hmm. of of life. Mm-hmm. And and so when he says, I am resurrection, he's saying, I can restore your life mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. right here, mm-hmm. if you believe in me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's always the qualification he well, puts on there. I think, you know, he says, I am the resurrection of the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives it lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He has some strength. Do you believe this? Well, of course, Jesus, what are they going to say? Well, yes, I, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. I still don't know that they believe, that they understand that what that means. No. What that means, I don't and, know. And, and a lot of people today don't understand no, what, what I think that you're means. Right. I don't think they do. Be, because it, it, if you read that literal, it almost makes it sound like Jesus said, "You'll never die." Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you believe in me, mm-hmm. you're never physically going to die. Mm-hmm. And that's not what Jesus was no, was no, saying not at what all. Saying. What what he's saying is, if you believe in me, even you'll if you live. physically decay, mm-hmm. you'll live, mm-hmm. and and you'll live eternally. And, and and one of the things that we have the hardest time grasping is living eternity now mm-hmm. and living it in such a way that that we believe that eternally one day we're going to be with with God and the Father and, and, and the Spirit, but live in such a way that we believe that that act's going to take place. You know, Jesus, Jesus is the only one that can give us life. He is, he is the resurrection and he is life. He's the only one that can give us life. We come to him and he says here, he says, the one who believes in me. And I think we can't wash over that part of it because, because believing in him doesn't mean said, oh yeah, I just accept Jesus as my savior. That that's, is part of it, all right? But that is not the end of it. That is the beginning. If I say I believe in Jesus, if I believe in him, then that means I'm going to be obedient to him. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to live my life the way he said. And he said, if you do that, then you will live. Yeah. And and I can tell you, and I know you know this too, when I came to him on his terms, when I did what he told me to do, when I was obedient to him and and made him the the part of my life, you know, that was the day that I began to live. Really live. Not live, not not be born over again. That's what he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus thought, well I gotta be reborn. I was reborn that day. I was born again into a spiritual life. And so when he says here, the one who believes in me will live, I, I am going to live. I'm going to live now, and I'm going to live in eternity. eternity. And that this life now will translate into eternity because I believe him. 
And because of that belief, and for you guys watching, you know, that, that belief, if you say you believe and you don't obey, Jesus said, then you don't believe. That's what he says. He says, if you do what I tell you, you know, you, he said, if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. You'll obey my commands. He said, you are my friends. If you do what I tell you to do, if I, if I'm not willing to do what he says, I can't say I believe, you know, the, the nation of Israel came to the promised land, did not go in. And in Hebrews chapter three, God says, I, I, I'm going to eradicate. God says in, in, in the book of Exodus, he said, I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to eradicate all of them. And he does. He kills 600,000 of them because they would not do what he told them to do. And he says, we see they did not get to go in because they did not believe. They didn't believe. He said, I'll give you the land. Go in and take it. And they said, oh, we can't do it. There's great walled cities and we look like grasshoppers. There's giants over there. We ain't going to go over there. And so he gives it to their children 39 years later, 37 years later. He gives it to their children. He has the same thing here. If I believe in him, it means I'm going to be obedient. It really, it really tears, torques me when, when I hear people saying, oh, well, all i got to do is accept Jesus as my Savior. Almost like it says, well, there's nothing else i got to do. If I want to go to church, I'll go to church. If I want to do this, I'll do this. I, I, but I believe that Jesus is my Savior, and I accept him as my Savior, that, and everything's good. That is not all there is. No, and, and, and what we have to realize is we have to reflect Jesus in our everyday life. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and if we truly believe then we'll act in that way. Absolutely. We'll be compassionate. We'll be loving people. We'll be people that that will choose to do those things mm-hmm. that are right and, and, and not choose the things that, that are going to be wrong. And, and so as a result, then we live like, like we expect to be in eternity. Yeah, and- you, know, you know, people today... A lot of times they live like this is all there is. Yeah. And, and and that's a total different lifestyle because because if this is all there is, then whoop it up and if, ha- have a good time. If a Christian lives like that, then they can't call themselves one. They can't call themselves a disciple if that's how they live. If they live based on, well, this is all there is, and call yourself a disciple, you're never going to convince God that you are one. Never, because he says exactly that. Here he says, he said, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. You know, well, I live because I believe in him. I live spiritually because I believe in him. Everything that I am, everything that I think is 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 being uh, is being channeled and funneled into a belief system in him, and he and he's the one that calls the shots. And that's how we have to live. And if he says, if I live like that, then I'm never going to die. Then what? One day I'm going to go to sleep. Mary Jane at some point is going to go to sleep, and and the minute, and then one day God is going to resurrect her body and 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 reunite her with her body. That's what He's talking about. I'm going to resurrect them, and He said, in the meantime, I am life. Mm-hmm. I am not only the resurrection for the for the end. I hope in that. I believe in that. But right now I can have life, and I can have that eternal life now. That carries on into the. I want us to read. I want us to look at at First Corinthians chapter fifteen for a second, uh, because if this is not true, this is what Paul tells the church at Corinth. Uh, he said. Uh, he says in ver, in chapter in First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse twelve. He said, "But if it, it is it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead?" See, even even there, they're still talking about it. They're still saying it, and he said. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. That means we're all a bunch of dupes. Then, then what we're saying don't mean anything and what we're living doesn't mean anything. If Jesus doesn't, isn't, if what Jesus said in John chapter 11 isn't true, then we all need to go home and do something else. And that's not true. We believe, you and I, and, and here we preach and we teach at this church, that, that, that the resurrection, you know, we celebrate it every Sunday morning. We just celebrated it Sunday morning. We'll celebrate it this morning again. We'll celebrate the, uh, the, the giving of Jesus to us, and we know that he has value because in the, on the third day the tomb was empty. And because he raised, he can raise me. And that's yeah. what he's saying here. He said, more than that, we are then found to be false witness about God, for we have testified of Christ, he ra- he, the, by God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him. In fact, the dead are not raised. 
For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only this, if for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. In other words, we're a bunch of fools. Yes, we are. If, if, if this is all that we believe life is all about, mm-hmm. then, then like Paul is saying, you know, why am I denying myself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why am I buffeting my body daily? Why am I going through all this struggle? If, if, if this is all there is to life and, and there is no resurrection, then yeah, we're just a bunch of fools. Well, yeah. why, why are we putting ourselves through that? But, but because we believe there, there is a resurrection, mm-hmm. then that's the reason why we go through some of the struggles that we go through and sometimes yeah. the trials that we go through because we believe that beyond what we're going through right here physically or, or mentally say, or spiritually say, yeah. it is, is the fact that one day there won't be any of that. Yeah, because eternally yeah. we'll be with the Father and the yeah. Son and the Spirit. And and you know, I can sit it. I can sit there in the auditorium on Sunday morning in worship at worship, and I can sit in the back, and uh, and I and I can see people, and I know ninety nine percent of them. So do you, mm-hmm. and I know lifestyles. I know where they've come from. I know where they're going. I know what they've been through and what they're going through. And and I and it it it's a warms my heart to see the the people that I know came from a from decadence and immorality, and I see them living a godly life, and I know that's because they believe that Jesus Christ is real, and Jesus Christ lives, and that He came out of the tomb, and because of that their hope is based on that event. And that is, that's fun. It's fun to be a part of that. It's fun to watch them. It's fun to see them worship uh, and know that, that we've had a hand in that, that we have, that we have helped to introduce them, not only through both of, both of us have preached before, we've taught classes before, and know that we've had a hand in that. This here this morning may help someone look at it and say, man, I got I to gotta start reading this stuff. I got to start looking at it because the resurrection is everything. And for these, for these folks that back here in John, in John chapter 11, uh, they're gonna. They're going to. Uh, uh, you know when when, you know right after this, they he she said yeah I believe that you're the son of God I believe you're the Messiah I do believe that, and after she said she went back and called her sister Mary and the teacher said it's here then asking, there and he's asking for you when Mary heard this she got up quickly and went to him now Jesus had not entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him when the Jews had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out there followed her suppose she was going to the tomb to mourn there when Jesus when Mary reached the place where Jesus was so she fell at his feet and said Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died they believed he was the they believed he had power they did and she believes she throws her uh, for the second time or maybe more than that she throws herself at his feet and says if he who had been here if you'd just been here, can you hear the agony in her voice? You know, we've been at funerals before. You know, I've, I've seen funerals where, where, uh, where mothers and fathers just wailed over a coffin, you know, burying their child or burying a, burying a loved one, bury, bury, you know, a, a father or mother. And it's just, it's heart-wrenching. And you see that here. And, and you know, we're going to get to that verse here that you said just a minute. It said when, when a when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied, and Jesus wept. You know, I've heard all kinds of people teach all kinds of stuff about that verse. Oh, he's going to bring him back into a godless world and an evil world, and that's why we... No, it isn't. He weeps because he's moved. He is moved in spirit because because of the relationship he had with oh, Mary yeah. and Martha and Lazarus. He is moved over this family and over this woman, these two women, you know, and how grief stricken they are. They've it, lost their brother. Even though, just like before he went to the cross, he knew what God's plan was. He knew what the Father's plan was here, and, and in, in order to, for for Jesus to be glorified and God to be glorified. Jesus had to follow that plan, but it still tore him up inside. Do you think he still has that kind of emotion now? 
Oh, I believe so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. I, so they I, would, would, I, I think that's one of the reasons why he's up there pleading our case before the Father. Yeah. He's saying, you know, that that's one of mine. You know, you know, that's one of ours, God. You know, Father. Well, we have know. a brother right now that is uh, that is struggling with fairly soon may lose his wife. You know, very soon may lose his wife, and uh, we just had one a, a, an individual that just lost his wife, and. Uh, and the grief and the, maybe there won't be the kind of grief like here, but uh, because we know where they're going, but still the loss, the feeling alone, uh, depressed because it's because we've had to watch them struggle, you know, and, and you know, I just uh, did a funeral for Pam a while back and that, that funeral was, I mean, not, I mean, I had to, I did one for Sylvia, mm -hmm. I mean, Sylvia. And Sylvia struggled for a long time. Uh, you know, Pam and I talked about her, and, and there, was a, there was some grief in that family. But for those of us who knew her, we didn't grieve. You know, we didn't. But, but when we lost someone really close to us, young, uh, we, it was, the grief was overwhelming. It, 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 it overwhelmed us. It almost, it almost destroyed us. Mm -hmm. It was so, we were so grief-stricken. And I want to believe that when we were when we were in agony, I got a phone call from a guy uh, that the, the next day after Cliff died, and uh, we had just I'd just been in Mark's room and he was putting together the the the, uh, the slideshow, and the the first slide that he pulled up was of me in an easy chair like this and Cliff was laying on my on my chest, and uh, and I lost it. I lost it, and I got a phone call, and I'm wailing, and uh, and the guys he don't he knows me really well. He didn't know he had no, he didn't know what happened, and I couldn't tell him. I couldn't, and I want to believe that when in that moment, that Jesus knew, and Jesus felt that pain, you know, and and he and I don't know if he wept, because Cliff is there with him, but for us who were are still here. You know, and, and he's not weeping for Lazarus, I don't believe. He knows what he's fixing to do. No. You know? it, it, he's, he's weeping because it, he's, the relationship he has with Mary and Martha and the pain that they're going through right now. Yeah, you know, and it moves him. You know, stop and think. Both of them said, Lord, you've been here. This wouldn't happen. Yeah. This wouldn't happen. I, I, I believe you, you would have healed him if you'd just been here. Yeah, you, know, you yeah. almost want to weep with them. Yeah. You, almost, you, yeah. you, you almost get choked yeah. up because you know how bad it hurts them and how mm -hmm. and how much these two ladies are struggling. And they put they put air, they called for him. They called for him a few days ago. You know, you're the guy you love. This guy is sick, man. You need to get here. You can fix this. And they're in agony and they're they're begging with him. They don't have social media. They can't mm -hmm. call him on the phone. You know, they sent a messenger, and and he and so here he and then he he waits, waits a couple more days, just to make sure that Lazarus is good and dead. <laughs> make sure he's good and dead. And they and and I and I I don't mean that facetiously, but but that's really the truth. So they'll know for sure. You know, when when he when and I think it's in here. Let me see if it if it is. Uh, and then the Jews said in the next verse, "See how he loved him." But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was cave. Take away the stone. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor. I think the, 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 uh, I think the King James says he stinketh. <laughs> by now he stinketh. Well, that's the truth. You know, he's been dead for four days. You know, they don't embalm. No. And Jesus said, you don't understand, guys. I'm fixing to show you something powerful and he's going to call Lazarus to come out of that tomb and Lazarus is going to come out of the tomb he said, Lazarus come forth and he comes forth he comes out of the tomb I can't I would love to have been there to see what the the look on some of these people's face what about the Sadducees if there was any of them there or when they hear about it what are they going to think because their whole religious dogma their doctrinal stance is there is no resurrection hmm. well okay now what do you do do you rethink it? Nope. We'll just, we'll just eliminate the guy. We'll just get rid of him. You know, the Pharisees say, "Well, this fits in our in our this fits in our narrative." We'll just get rid of him. Well, and and, and you look at Martha's response. You know, 
and he's been dead four days. It's yeah. this tense. Yeah. You know, you think you're going to be able to do something now? Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, what Jesus was trying to get them to see was, trust me. Yeah. I'm yeah. I, I'm going to restore his life. I'm going to I'm going to be the resurrection mm-hmm. right here today mm-hmm. for you. Just watch and and see what happens. And if if we can only wrap our minds around that that mm-hmm. Jesus can be our resurrection, he can take any kind of life out there mm-hmm. that that's in the gutter, that's just totally messed up, and he can raise it up mm-hmm. to be absolutely. You know, there was Absolutely. a song, it raised, raised me up to more than I could ever be. That's what people watching, yeah. they need to know. And, and if you've got somebody in your family that you know or somebody that is is uh, that you know is not in a right relationship with God, they, they need a relationship with Jesus. They need that relationship. But he's the only one that can give it to them. He's the only one that can, that can give them life while they live and give them life after they die to carry that life over. He's the only one that can do that. And he promises, I am the resurrection. I am I am resurrection. I am the one. If I do it, you'll do it. I'll bring you up too. And, you know, that's the promise was all the way back in Genesis chapter 3. You know, mm-hmm. when Satan believes he's got him, he don't have him at all. No. You know, because the, pro- the, the, the promise to eat, I mean, to, to Adam and Eve, and the promise to the world is one day, one day, you, the the seed of woman is going to strike you on the head. He and he takes away Satan's power. Satan doesn't have any power over me anymore. He doesn't have any power of, over of death over me. Can't hold me anymore. He can't do any of that because Jesus has fixed that for me, and uh, and he can fix it. He can fix it for the lost and dying world. That's why it's so important for us in our vision statement. That our vision statement is that we are striving to help everyone to live out the life of Christ. That we're our mission statement is that we want it to be God's heart and God's hands. That's our job. Is you know the the only command He gave us when He left is going to all the world and preach the gospel. You know, teaching them, making disciples of them, baptizing them. You know, I don't care what the rest of the religious community said. That's what He said. And at some point, you got to wrap your head around it and say, okay, He said that. He said, you know, I'm going to go into all the world. We're going to teach the gospel. We're going to make disciples of them. We're going to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. How can he say that if he's not going to resurrect? From the... Well, he did resurrect. He said that after he resurrected and before he ascended in heaven. He says basically the same thing in, in the book of Mark. And, and, I, and I think this incident happened in this place to get his disciples ready for the Absolutely. resurrection. Yeah. To get yeah. them ready for what was coming down down the road. But even, even when it did happen, you notice in, in John... You know, he appears to Mary, you know, and, and and then he appears to the two on the road to Emmaus. Mm-hmm. And what happens? The, the 11, uh, well, yeah, it took place, but we don't know where he is. Yeah. You know, and then he shows up and says, here I am. Can't you see my but, hands? But, you know, people that, that saw him right after, they didn't recognize him. No, they didn't. There's something different about him. Yeah. He's different. He's right. not the same. You know, the, the resurrected body that he had, I don't know what, ha- what that meant, but he was not the same, and they didn't recognize him. Maybe, uh, you know, if it, it, I'm going to put that on hold, but, you know, <laughs> that this, it, we need to understand as, as people that if we put our hope in this world, we are going to be sadly and sorely disappointed. If we put our hope in Jesus and believe in him, we can have life and have it to the full. Yes, we can, and we can have that life on into the next life. Jesus promised He's going to create a new heaven and new earth. I don't know what all that's going to be like, but I want to be a part of it, and that's and I want everyone that's watching. I want them to see this. Hey, here we are. You know, Jesus has talked about I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I'm the good shepherd. Here He says, "Okay, that's all fine and good. You're going to have to do all of that, but here I am the resurrection." And I'm life, real life, because you'll say, I think you agree, life I had before, life you had before was not real life. It was not real life. What I have now, what I have with Jesus is life. Right. It so, is. you know, we're going to, we're going to uh, do, I think the next one is, is uh, in 14. I'm 14. Really, yeah. 14. The way, the truth and the life. You know, I am the way, the truth and the life. You know, and that'll kind of be a part two. It'll kind of carry over. We'll do another text. We'll do that next week. 
And then I think we got one after that is the vine. And that one I'm, I'm looking forward to because that's the one that says, get better, get busy. You better get busy. You need to, you need to start making some fruit. Uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. But, uh, you know, I hope everyone understood. If I was in a class, I would ask, do you have any questions? Uh, and if you do have any questions, please, uh, you know, feel free. I think there's a, they got a scroll on the bottom to, to uh, let you know how to get a hold of us and get in contact with us. And uh, please, even if you don't agree, if there's something you don't agree with, right? Hey, you know, I'd love to sit down with you and, and we can, and if I'm wrong, if James and I are wrong, I want to know that. I need to know that. You need, you have a responsibility to tell me and tell us. So uh, let's pray and we'll be, we'll be through with this one. Right. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for, for the, the gift of your son. He is resurrection. He is life. He is bread of, of, the, of, of life. He is the light of the world. He is all of those things, Father, that he claimed to be. And because we believe that, we have life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the life we have now. And thank you for the life that is to come. We know that when we die, we will sleep. And that you will wake us up again and call us to be back with you in bodily form. Father, I don't know what that's going to be like. But I, I look forward and long for that uh, to happen in our lives one day. Thank you, Father, for loving us. And thank you for being our God and for loving us so much. In Jesus' name we pray.